new video today. So it's nothing 4AG related, it's the 1KZ. Just doing some general maintenance over the new year break. So I've, what I've done is put off all the intakes and, and um, air filter and all that sort of things. And I'm going to change these glow plugs here. And I'm going to take this intake manifold off and see how clogged up it is. Because of the EGR valve which I still need to block off. So I'm going to start doing that today. And last night I pulled out, yeah, I pulled out all the stuff. So you got some pipes and stuff down there. And clean up the air filter. And I've also got a new uh, fuel filter to go in there. So yeah, it's just a bit of general maintenance, which I've been needing to do for quite a while. At some stage you're going to replace the injectors, but not today. So I'll come back in here at another stage. The main priority today is to pull this off, clean it out, and change the glow plugs in this area. So I've purchased a set of these things here, just so I can get these injector pops off in here. So let's go around there and snap them to break, to break them. So I've got to pull this back to get this manifold off. Those two are right. But yeah, it just goes around, hooks onto there, and back down into the injector pump. So that should make the job a whole lot easier and more controlled. Having some of these, they weren't expensive, so tool for life once I bought it now. So you've just sprayed a bit of low brand all these just to make sure they sort of crack quite nicely. To help ease room, I've just pulled out my oil filter, just to give a bit more room. And I put all this in here just to stop any debris falling inside that piece. And I was able to get up to the, the far corner nut up there, and all the rest of them all cracked. So hopefully it's as easy as pulling it off, and maybe a, pulling some of these around it. Um, as you can see they're loose, I've cracked all these off. Just so this is all freely mobile without bending anything. And I've cracked all the other injectors down the back there as well. So, yeah, it's time to start undoing all these. And I'm going to slip it all off. Upon removing this intake, I'm trying to get this EGR out. So these two studs that actually go back that way. So I can't just pull this out this way. So I've got to get that back first before I can pull this out. So what I've had to do is pull off all the heat shields off the exhaust manifold and I'm just cracking these two nuts where the EGR valve pipe goes around and it's going to pull this all back just so that whole unit can go back very much surprised that none of these snapped they all come off with ease and everything's actually come off with ease like there's nothing stubborn I thought of doing was it 267,000 k's now I thought it'd be pretty festery and um looking like that and snapping off but clearly not so everything's pretty good Sp sprayed a bit of WD-40 in there before I cracked them and everything's good so I'm just going to pull this back now and then hopefully we can get this piece off over here quite a job just for something so simple but there may be other ways around it but this is the way I'm doing it right finally got this one off so that's a nut and underneath is actually a bolt which is doesn't have, have much much of a head and I don't want to strip it right off but I've actually been on well I've been on it since probably maybe 11 a.m. this morning now it's after 3 p.m. I've been out buying other tools and look forward another wherever it is brought another socket chopped it down because you've got limited room down behind there between the firewall and that bolt and also bought a little 3 8 breaker bar something like this and yeah cracked it because before I was using spanners and they just keep slipping off slipping off and I was like I'm gonna totally stuff up the whole here the bolt and knock it off at all but um yeah, it's not very not very deep in that piece compared to a normal bolt kind of like that it's decent quite shallow. Anyway it's off now so I'm going to pull that tube back and start pulling off the rest of it. Here we have it, it takes off. That's a good look at the ports. As you can see this one's a lot more caked up around the edge. 
I was expecting them to be worse to be honest but um, so it's a bit smaller these ones aren't too bad that one's more oily obviously where the um, throttle body is and everything just goes straight in um, I'd say it's from the turbo because it's oily through there and it comes straight through and straight in that way um, but it was yuck crap is half it's from the EGR valve or most of it so I'll see if I can zoom in a bit can't see too much but see too much, you can see a little bit of the light in there, see the valve and everything, and that one at the end which is all really crap, so if I come down here, you can see this end one, which is, yeah, fairly clogged up, unless the air can still get through, yeah I've watched a few videos and these have been Oh, quite small some of them just over the years of how much build up is it is and then um, obviously the air fuel which just get all mucked up and it starts running a bit crazy and less power and everything else so I'm going to try and get the throttle body off I'm not sure if I can because I haven't got a socket for those but I'll attempt to and just clean everything out so in here, I turn, plan to turn the crank around and like shut the valve up, work on each port, and just clean out the best I can from this end, blow all the crap out. Um, I'll just work through each one as it goes, or which ones are closed at the same time, and and then yeah, let call it a day at that. But at least I know it's all as clean as it's going to be without taking the head off. Just cracked all these. So I just used a six, little 6 mil socket, I was going to use some of these from work but they didn't grow small enough which would be perfect to fit over these, but now these are all loose I can unwind them and pull the throttle body off, so we should pretty much just lift the manifold and I might pull this piece off here and whatever whatever else it is, such as the bare manifold, I can clean and scrub it, um, don't think I'll blast at work but we'll see where we get to. These big long studs. Just brought this out in the sunshine, so I just scratched off all this corner here, so you can sort of see in the sunlight how it is. So if I start, see how thick it is. So it's very hard to do this with one hand, but you can see, sort of see what I'm talking about. Pretty crap. Another thing to note is look how blocked up that little nipple is that comes off there and that focuses. But yeah, it's like a tiny weenie hole. It should be a lot larger than that. You can take away this end port here and this is all the muck that they've just pulled out with the screwdriver. Like that's just what I can reach with the screwdriver, all that stuff in the bottom, all that stuff around the top, and there's still more in there. I'm just going through each port now, just going to do the same thing, dig it all out and then spray have a degreaser and what other clean I need to put in there to try and get it back to clean. Each your EGR piece is pretty, <laughs> probably the cleanest bit of the whole thing. Just finished all the scrubbing of the ports, so like three cans of degreaser later. Um, she's all looking as good as it's going to get. So as you can see it's not too bad, slight stain of the old black but overall she's pretty good, all the same, the only bits I can't get to is obviously the inside edge of there, inside of each of there, but I had it on all toothbrush with a nice flexi corner which could get right around the corner, and also cleaned out this little nipple, so now it's quite a large hole versus a little tiny one clean in there. I'm not too worried about this black on the outside because you don't see it. 
Yeah, no, I just cleaned out all my bottle body on the inside. It's come out good. So before I get involved with these ports, I'm just going to whip out these glow plugs. Be super gentle with them so they don't break off the ends. So it's just 12mm straight out, straight in hopefully. Glow plugs are all out now, so they're all there apart from this one. The tip's not there. Um, what I've noticed, if I just compare these two, is that one has white right to the base and the black end. Whereas this one has no white at all and a snap tip and it's got carbon on it. So, so I don't know if it's obviously spoiled it in the past possibly. I'm going to chuck a piece of wire through and see if it actually pushes right through or if it's actually jammed in there. I'll grab the tip of my WD-40 because that is longer than the actual whole glow plug. So I've just done this and I'll just redo it for you guys. So this is in the glow plug, goes right into there. That's where it stops, it's, it's hard. Same with this one, right in and it stops, it's hard. They're all the same, so I'm guessing it's not actually stuck in there. It's been swallowed, maybe at the turbo or whatever. <laughs> If it didn't do any damage in there, but um, I mean it's been running months up until now, just hard to start, which is probably because the whole section's missing and these are old. Been doing some more research on these glow plugs, so as I showed you, that's well and truly been off for a while, it's all black on the end. I gave this one a tap because they get quite brittle, and you can see the difference of how white it looks when it's freshly broken. Watch a video from 4x4 Diesel in Australia, and they explain the same thing as well. So these are all gone in, 13 new meters of torque, and I'll put some anti seeds on on the threads just so they come out easy for the next next time they come out. They recommend to do them sort of every hundred thousand k's, and at that price I told you about earlier, why not? So they're all in there. Time to venture onto this bit here. I'm going to tape up all these little pieces here so no debris gets in there. Same with the ones down there. And put some plastic through here hopefully so I can sort of clean it out. And close the valve up that I'm working on. Now I've just started on this one. I'm going to do this one here. And I'll leave this one to last because all these valves are closed and this one's open. So I'm just pulling out crap like this and literally just wiping it in here. So much of it coming out. Just finished doing these three ports here. So I was cleaning out pretty basic but as good as I could without getting too overboard. And I've sprayed some brake cleaner in there and just a little bit in there waiting to evaporate. So I'll let those three sit overnight. I hope that's all gone by tomorrow. If not, I'll chuck a rag in there to evaporate it all and soak it up. And then I'll work on this big chunky one. You can see the valve still open down there. It's pretty thick. I'm looking forward to cleaning that one out. Just rotated the crank around so this valve will close up. So, yeah, she's looking pretty, pretty awesome in there. Spray that brake cleaner. Um, you can already see the alloy in there, so it's a huge improvement already. What I'm going to do next is grab one of these rags and stuff it in with my screwdriver and just wipe it out. And then we'll just have a bit of a look at see what's going on, what needs to be done, or what is left. I mean, this is a huge improvement of what it was. So, yeah, I'm very pleased with that. It's the last port. I've done all that same thing to the rest of them. I mean, this one was the worst one, so I thought I'd video this one more. So there we have it, all done. So that's pretty much as good as you're going to get for 
a clean up on the vehicle. Well, that I'm going to give it anyway. But you can see right in there, no, none of that crap in there. As it was. So that's that one. This one's still got a little bit of stuff on the upper, but I mean, I'm not worried about that. You can see alloy right through, so that's good. This one's the same. Nice and clean. You can see alloy, just the staining of the oil. Let's have the E one there. So yeah, massive improvement from what you've seen to now. By the time these are all on there, with nice clean ports, it's going to be flying so much nicer. And no EGR valve, it's far better. So yeah, I should have done this years ago, since I've, I've had this car on its ute since 2016, so it should have been the first thing I've done. But, um, better late than never. Making up some blanking plates now. So I've heard you can actually block off this pipe here for the actuator, what they call it. But um, I'm just going to put some plate on that side and plate on this side just so it's all completely blocked. Put on some new gaskets now, Genuine Toyota. So they're pretty good matching to the ports. There's a slight little um, line around them. But it's the same as these, so it's all matches up pretty good. Put my plate in there, got a gasket in between. And I might just use the old gasket to go between that and the EGR valve piece there. That way it's all nicely sandwiched and I'll do the same on the other side. This is my EGR valve on the exhaust side, so much the same. Got another gasket there which I'm just going to put on the other side so it's all sandwiched together. It's the same thickness on each side. Just put on the heat cover, done up all the bolts to 9, 8 Nm torque I think it was. And put the pipe back on around the back there, done those up. Put the throttle body on there those up the spec and talked up all these fuel lines to spec um, so I'm about to put the top pipe over so I can hook all these little vacuum sensors on and that should be done um, put the caps on these top of these glow plugs and that's pretty much it just about to put some more of these brackets on put the oil filter back on so it's pretty much pretty basic, pretty simple. And then I'll have to put the other in, intake pipe, pipe over once I put the um, air filter back in. But before that, I'll do the fuel filter just to make it easy. Intake's all really on. So every single bolt's been used up, apart from the air box. So yeah, everything's done. Just gotta pull out the filler for the trans and fill that up. After I put the sump bolt in and then do the fuel filter tomorrow when it's daytime and it's not stinky. Although well, it's going to sting up the shed tonight. Um, then that's it done. Just out taking the surf for a bit of a test run. So, so far it sounds like it's running a bit smoother. I did a few little spurts up the road before and it actually feels like it had a slump, a bit more pickup. It won't be much um, overall, but just a bit more pep. Obviously the ports are a lot wider open, so it's like almost doing a port job on it in a way. Um, this whole truck is, like engine-wise, is completely stock, apart from the k &N air filter, and it's got a snorkel. No one to call it on this one, as you've seen in the, photo, in the videos. So, yeah, it's, um, I'm quite happy with so far how it's pulling. Um, feels like the RPM's slightly down when just cruising than before. So it's the engine's not quite choked up and the EGR pumping exhaust gases in. Um, yeah, so I'm quite pleased. We'll just give it a bit of a spurt up here to 0 to 80 k's. Yeah, about to come onto the 80k zone. I'm just, um, just gonna put my foot down.
fourth gear goes in the, into the fourth gear around 85 k so it will pull a bit higher um, but overall if it's pulling a little bit lower revs overall it's going to save you a bit more gas hopefully so we'll soon find out I'll do an odometer test um, what a full tank does out of a tank so there we have it all done hope you enjoyed watching something a bit different seen the satisfaction of all that black crap coming out of those ports but now peace of mind that's all done now it's super clean and it's running to its full potential in there so next thing on this will be obviously the injectors which will be in the next few months hopefully um, pretty pricey so but they need to be done so yeah please remember to like subscribe um, and I'll see you in the next 4AG video.